Welcome to Downshift, everyone. My name is Paulo. And my name is Matt. And thanks to our friends at Mercedes-Benz of Milwaukee, we've spent the day with the AMG GLE 63S. And we've been all over its competitors, the X5 or 6M, the Audi RS Q8. And this is a lot of fun, but it's also a lot of luxury. So today, I'm gonna to walk you through the best and the rest, see how it stacks up to those rivals. Yeah, then we're gonna grab the keys, talk about standouts and how it stacks up against those competitors. Let's get into it. <laughs> Now really the only thing that I can put on the con side objectively, and it's the same for every Mercedes and AMG video that we do, is just it's relatively more expensive than its closest rivals. The GLE 63 here starts at $130,000, where BMW's equivalent X5M starts at $125K, so a $5,000 delta. And Audi's RS Q8, interestingly, that's usually significantly cheaper than the BMW. That's also just $5,000 cheaper at $125K as well. And then when you think about it, if you want to go up the ladder even further to a Porsche Cayenne Turbo, that's going to be more expensive than you get in this AMG by a significant amount and this is going to have a lot more personality at least in my opinion than the M or the RS from Audi so I think I'd spend the extra five grand for the AMG so then switching gears and talking about the best things about this AMG my favorite thing about every AMG is this has so much character, so much personality, so much sound. Here, it's a 4-liter twin-turbocharged hot V V8 with a mild hybrid system. 603 horsepower, 627 pound-feet of torque. That mild hybrid system is adding 21 horsepower. That's pretty good. It's about 17 mpg. Doesn't sound amazing on paper, but in context, my 5th gen 4Runner was getting 17 mpg and that thing was like not anywhere <laughs> as dynamic or sharp as this, so everything in relative terms. 17 mpg is actually pretty good. It's very similar to what you're going to get in the others as well. 0 to 60 in about 3.5-ish, but it's just so loud. It feels like it has so much more character, more so than the BMW, definitely more than the Audi. This mill has the most personality, for sure, of all the Germans. Another Mercedes staple in these videos has to do with the interior. Not just the luxuries that you get, but also the design and the overall experience that you have in the cabin. But starting with some of the luxuries and features. Of course, you have heated and cooled seats available to you. You even have massage seats available to you and the auto-adjusting seat controls. You have a heated steering wheel, of course, memory seats. But what I love here with this twilight blue is the Bahia brown and black two-tone interior. You've got Alcantara. The leather perforation is excellent and the beautiful design extends to the overall cabin and the dash etc it's beautiful clean classic you've got the new steering wheel for this year there's wood here on the dash the open pour which i really love but you can get carbon fiber whatever you want you get heated and cooled cup holders the true hallmark of a luxury car and the burmester speaker covers don't just look great but of course they sound the business as well and the ambient light as we know from mercedes is the best in the business and one place that people kind of ding Mercedes, at least in the more modern era, is the build quality. But here, I mean, that's not going anywhere. This is slapped together impeccably well, as you would expect from the three-pointed star. Then I'll flip it back into comfort mode, and we'll just talk about the driving experience. Because at the end of the day, you're not going to be driving in track pace all the time. It's still a Mercedes, so you get 4MATIC+. Plus. It never sends more than 50% of the power to the front, so it's a truly rear bias system. You have an LSD back there. It handles beautifully. You've got the 9-speed multi-clutch transmission from AMG. Loads of drama. Snap on shift. It's about 5,500 pounds, this thing. So you get 285s in the front, 315s in the back. That's a lot of rubber. But you get air suspension. And that's not only just good for composing the body and chassis when you're driving hard, but it also will raise and lower up to 2.2 inches. And that's why you have an off-road screen, which is a little funny, but hey, at least you have it. And it kind of splits that personality a little bit. And when it comes to the ride, I was expecting to tell you that it's harsh, but the truth is, it's not really. It rides better than the GLE 53 that we had before. The only thing that kind of comes through that's a little harsh is some of the tire noise from the Michelins, but you got a lot of performance rubber on here, so that does have a little bit of a trade-off. And if you don't want to hear that, you just downshift a couple, get on throttle, and then you hear V8, so it's all good. But it's just emotional to drive hard. I don't usually rev out cars or drive them super hard like a baboon past getting my initial impressions, but this one, there's something about an AMG V8 that reverts me to a primal state. 
and it's just fun. But again, I keep getting distracted wanting to talk about the V8 and the performance, but no, when you flip it back into comfort or individual, however you want to set it, it does kind of just become a GLE. I've got a great seating position, visibility is excellent, head-up display is giving me everything that I want. It's easy to drive, the ride is good, the steering feels natural and organic. I can sit here going down the road getting a massage. It's still a great Mercedes when you take the AMG away. And when it comes to the trunk and the cargo capacity, the GLE doesn't miss here either. Now in the normal GLE, you can option a third row, but for the AMGs, that option is gone. Now some people might see that as a bit of a ding, but to be honest, I would never have ordered my GLE with the third row anyway. I would just go up to the GLS if I wanted that. So what you get here is maximum trunk space, which is a lot more usable. 34 cubic feet of space, you've got lights, hangers, netted bins. The only bummer with the trunk is you can't fold the seats from the trunk. You have to go up to the cabin to do that. But with the seats down, you're looking at 75 cubic feet of space. So it's a great practical space, and not only that, it gets even better because you've got this little toggle here on the side of the trunk to control your air suspension to lower or raise the car to make it easier to get things in and out of the trunk. And we're not going far for this next point. We're gonna talk about towing, and the max towing capacity on the GLE is 7,700 pounds, which is just insane. No one's gonna do that in their 600 horsepower mega SUV, but it's nice to know that there's some muscle underneath the chassis here. And it's 2024, so how could we not talk about technology? Starting up front, what I'm looking at right now, massive full color head-up display, loads of different customizability depending on what I want to see. Down below, you've got a nice digital instrument cluster. Again, endless seeming customizability, almost to an insane degree. Center screen, same size, loads of customizability. The software looks great, the graphics look good. It's really pretty nice. But the big thing is, now you can get wireless Apple CarPlay here on your GLE. Thank you. When it comes to your 360 cameras, you get really, really good 360 cameras. Mercedes does the best 360 cameras and ambient light in the game. But in the cameras, you get that like force field thing. So it's like, hey, you're getting too close to that curb or that other car or whatever. It's gonna let you know. You get different themes. The Distronic, the driving assist stuff, amazing. From a technology standpoint, this is what Mercedes focuses on, it seems. So if they're gonna focus on good technology and loud V8s, I'm here for it every day. And when it comes to styling, I do think that this segment overall kind of has it nailed. All the rivals look pretty good, but it's no exception here in the GLE, especially with all the AMG accoutrement that you get. There's slight revisions to the headlights, but of course you get the strong looking Panamericana grill, you get the Falterbach AMG logo on the hood donning it, and you've got the aggressive power dome hood creases. It's wrapped in twilight blue metallic, which is a fantastic color. And you've got the AMG wheels, which are so typical. You can get carbon ceramic with some gold brake calipers, but here we've got the red to signify that conventional sporty attitude. And the profile is pretty similar, that is to say, pretty handsome. And around back, the taillights have also been a little bit updated for this year, and you get the classic AMG quad rhombus tips. I really do have a hard time picking my favorite between the RSQ8, the X5M, and this GLE 63, so leave it down in the comments which one you like the best. And we've saved one of the best things for last, and that's the rear seats, because they are enormous and luxurious back here. In terms of knee room, headroom, I mean size-wise, this is huge. It's the biggest in the class, bigger than the X5, bigger than the Q8. You get window shade options here. You've got vents, chargers, pockets, etc., cup holders. You've got heated back seats, or you can get them. You've got a massive panoramic roof, dual pane. And overall, I mean, I'm 6'1", and I can pretty comfortably cross my legs back here, and this is just proper comfortable. All of the suede, the Alcantara, the Bahia brown two-tone, the open pour, the Burmester, everything that makes the interior special up front continues in the back here, and I just love it. There's just a couple odds and ends before we go with Paulo and go for a drive. In here, you can get the fragrance ionizer, which takes a fragrance and diffuses it throughout the cabin with the air vents. You want to smell like a rich person? That's how you do it. And this may be a mild hybrid, and that kind of kills the startup sound, that little theater and that crack that you get. But Mercedes AMG always has this little, little cheat code. If you hold the up paddle and click the start button, I'm trying to do it with one hand while I'm filming. It's still not the conventional startup sound, but it gives you more of a crack. They call it their emotion start. Like it was sales, tread earlier. And then it was sales numbers. <laughs> and now it's we get one Land Rover, and now you can't stop talking about real life. Well, it's my favorite thing about every AMG. <laughs> it is very quick. It's so loud. <laughs> oh, and then just the pops. Yeah, you get some nice pops in the back. Oh, what an experience. 
this is a, this is everything that I love about a car is just it's loud, it's fast enough, but that I also don't have to be beat up while I'm driving. Right, yeah, you can dial it back. It's got the air suspension and it feels very comfortable. Can we also talk about the theater and drama that is the steering wheel? Look at these little, I mean, this is... There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. And I don't love the the slidey buttons for like selecting things in the infotainment, but the actual like drive selector with the spin and then you can control your exhaust. It's just cool, it's yeah. well done. Um, any standouts for you? I know you didn't really have a lot of time to drive it, but... No, I think, yeah, the the theatrics that you get behind the wheel, um, I, honestly, I think what impressed me the most, though, is how it rides with the air suspension. I think it's um, it's really fantastic that you have the speed but the comfort with this. Yes, yes, this is, you know, we spent some, we've spent a bunch of time earlier this year in the X6M competition, and that was noticeably stiffer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's brutally and violently fast but it's not like this is slow but no. this becomes just a GLE in a way that that doesn't just become an X5 right you know what I mean yeah so I think that that brings up the, the main topic of there's three major players in this sphere we've talked about them all video GLE 63 X5 6M you know coupe whatever and then the RSQ8 yeah and I think a lot like the TLX video they represent uh, areas within the spectrum yeah the yep. X5M hardcore performance unforgiving yeah it's like the most pure i feel like driving yeah. experience you're going to get out of the three you know ma mainly for the people that want that spirited driving yes if you want which is just inherently a strange thing if you want the most hardcore performance big family suv yes <laughs> bmw's got your back that's basically only that yes and then you get to this which is kind of that goldilocks zone that we talked about where this is really really fast loud fun handles beautifully bundles but of character you can dial it back and it's more it's, refined and, yeah. and more comfortable it's just it's easy it just becomes a benz after a little bit yeah if you want it to and then the audi is is probably more comfortable than this but it doesn't give me the character and personality that i get from the engine and the exhaust and the nine speed here yeah and i mean that's also the slowest out of the group yeah um but it's going to be comfy. Yeah, I and it, it it looks pretty good too, I think. Yes. I think they all look good in like their own right. So I, I've i gone down this path ever since I started doing these videos of what do I like? Learn thyself, know thyself. What am I into? And it's this. Every single time it's an AMG, as long as it's got a V8. Because it's just the snap that you get from the 9-speed, the multi-clutch, the exhaust sound that you get from the V8. It's, a, it's everything that I want. And the fact that... I can then just chill out. It can be quiet, it doesn't have to bark at me, it can ride smooth. I'm having this Yeah. Of the three. What about you? I, I'm glad that you picked this, because I, actually before this video, we started filming, I took a guess at what Matt would guess and I got his right. <laughs> and I guess, why don't you take actually a guess of what I would get? You would get the M. Yes, I would. You would get the M for sure. Yes, because I'm not, I don't get too hung up on the ride, like the, the You don't get too suspension. hung up with being comfortable. I mean, in a I'm sense. I mean, in a sense, yeah. I mean, my Genesis is lowered now, and it's on. It still rides springs. better than my car, too. I know, which is crazy, actually. Um, but yeah, I things. don't. I like the pure performance that you get from the M. I think it's just a touch better than this, and to me, like that offsets the comfort that you would get with this. And also, I just think from a reliability standpoint, the MW edges uh, bends out as well, based on the things that I. I follow and, sure. and, and, and research. Um, and then I think it would be this and then the um, RSQ8. The yeah. So here comes some wild cards now. Escalade V, which is a completely different thing. Yep. Three row, body on frame, truck chassis, but with supercharged V8 and Durango Hellcat. So unibody, but still three row Hellcat engine SUV. So different things. Just for fun, what would you have? Yeah, I think the Escalade moves up in the list and the Durango just because of like the build quality and stuff I think would move towards the bottom. Um, I think I'd probably still either get the M, the Escalade I think is going to be in second just because it's so outrageous. It is so outrageous and I feel like there hasn't been a car that I've been in that I've like smiled or laughed or giggled as much as I have in the Escalade. Like it was just so outrageous. It's so intoxicating the experience of just being on power. Yeah. And then the crack that you get on shit. It, it, again, that and this AMG are exactly what I'm looking for in a car. It's loud, it's obnoxious, and then you just get a thunder clack 
gearbox mm -hmm. or gear change. Yeah. So it would be either either this or Escalade V. If it actually came down to my money, I probably would have this because I think it's just a more well-rounded package. Obviously, I mean, look at this interior. Um, and then, yeah, probably the Escalade and then the M. And then probably the Audi and then the Durango. But the Durango, again, is the Durango is, is something that I would love to just like drive, but I don't think I'd want to own it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, you get the nice like wine with that too. Yeah. But okay, I think with that, we've covered pretty much everything. I'm just going to do one more send. And then thank you to our friends at Mercedes Benz of Milwaukee for letting us have a go. In your absolutely, whoop, I got a downshift. Absolutely ridiculous <laughs> GLE 63. <laughs> And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.